It's raining and it's windy and the cabin we were supposed to stay at this week did not work out. So we're going on a road trip instead. So the plan so far is to go south and hit Northwest Connecticut go zigzagging through the Catskills, probably sleep there tonight, and then go to Pennsylvania where the foliage is peaking. Other than that, we're just going with the flow and we'll see where we end up. I had never really road tripped or car camped before, so I didn't know what to expect but it was sort of freeing to leave without a true agenda. Every moment felt thrilling and unforeseen. And not even an hour into the trip, we both caught a glimpse of a waterfall out of the corner of our eyes and pulled over immediately to take another peek. These little stops, the ones that you usually wouldn't have time for, were what this trip was about. And then we kept on going south, approaching the Connecticut border where we would discover our second stop. And we actually left late in the day, so evening came quickly and we were ready for dinner, which ended up being this great hole in the wall somewhere in New York. After dinner, I found a promising spot on this off-roading map that was rumored to have primitive campsites, and it wasn't easy getting there. There's no way that's And with her adrenaline soaring, we kept on looking for a place to sleep. And that place was an empty nook along the pines, where we'd put all our things in the front while we set up camp in the back. We can even use these life jackets as pillows. Yeah. Like right there. Yeah. Let it air out. We're gonna wake up with squirrels in here. I love being in here when it's like this. It's so cozy. I think this is my first time sleeping in a car the right way. <laughs> oh yeah. The same outfit. <laughs> Hey 
and we woke up slowly to bright foliage all around us and the birds singing and really crisp bottom air. And I started up on cooking a little breakfast out of the back of the rover. So I forgot olive oil, which is a huge mistake on my part. So I'm gonna put some water in with the vegetables to kind of steam them and soften them so they don't just burn in the pan without the oil but it's also a non-stick pan, so we should be okay. And this place is so beautiful. And Kyle found a trail sign in front of the rover that says there's a waterfall just a mile from here, so we're definitely checking that out. I love packing as many vegetables and other nourishing ingredients into breakfast as possible. That way you can start the day out on a strong note. So I added onion, pepper, tomato, and mushroom into our eggs. <laughs> and to our surprise, there was actually a strong stream right next to where we slept. So after we wrapped up, I went down to rinse off the plates. And in that moment, I had no tasks or troubles in the world besides washing dishes. So we packed everything away and set out in search of the waterfall. Between two stone walls and people would walk on it on horses. This whole trail, on and off, but for the majority, has been a bunch of runoffs collecting right on the trail, so it forms a bit of a river. It's been a little tough to walk through, but the waterfall is going to be worth it, I think. And it was. We walked those falls up and down so many times and just felt overwhelmed with how breathtaking it was and how we had ended up here simply by the cues of the universe. And at that point, we felt it was time to continue our journey and exit through the vibrant forests.
so quick. I had to charge my phone for a little bit, but we've basically just been roaming all the nooks and crannies of all these trails that kind of interweave. And now we're just by a couple streams and taking it all in. What I really like about this time of year is that the top of the tree canopy might be sort of bare, but all of the roads have become covered in those leaves. So everything on the ground is orange. And then you look up at all the things that are starting to turn in this second wave. So beautiful. And when we had worked our way out of the forest, we paused at a scenic roadside vista where the foliage was eye-catching against the slate-colored sky. I heard something crunch over here and Kyle and I didn't even realize that there was a building on the other side of the road because the foliage was too distracting. So crazy looking. So these are riverbank grapes, which are edible. I've never eaten a roadside grape, so I'm gonna give it a try. The grape was sweet and a tad tart, but it was filled with enormous seeds. I don't know if I would recommend eating them. Look at this, you can see the trail that came up my leg. <laughs> oh, it's a snail. A little snail. The rover rumbled past fields and bridges and farms and ponds and steeples as we headed towards Pennsylvania. And around that time, the sun began its descent, so we decided to find a brewery for dinner. The combo of crisp IPAs and a warm pretzel with beer cheese is tough to beat this time of year. And then we crossed into New Jersey and had to find a spot to sleep. So we went into the woods until a little patch opened up where we could park. That night, we fell asleep to coyotes howling and whimpering in the distance. Day three began with wisps of fog surrounding us and little to no foliage, so we left swiftly but enjoyed the eerie trek out. And we grabbed a quick bite to eat close by before spending the day hopping around places we'd never been. Do we have it to ourselves? <laughs> 
First, we scouted out the highest point, Hand Lake in New Jersey in the Kittatinny Ridge area, which offered up rich and vivid foliage. Then we ventured into the Mohawk State Forest in New York, which housed grassy trails and an old abandoned tower. We watched the sun dip behind the mountain, and the sky put on a show for our last night out on the road. And we headed back on familiar streets and through the covered bridge until we arrived back at the office. After working so hard this fall, it was nice to have some spontaneity, and I can't wait for longer and farther adventures in the future. <laughs>